So the unit one, lesson five practice is what I'm looking at. It might not be your number two question because I think this one is jumbled, but you all have a question that talks about the data set represents the heights in centimeters of 10 model buildings or bridges made for an engineering competition. So MAD stands for mean absolute deviation. So let's break down that word. Mean absolute deviation. So first you need to know what the mean is and how to find it. Um, how do you find the mean of a data set? So that would be median. If I just want the mean, how do I find that? Okay, so to find this regular mean, you find the sum of all the numbers, and then what do you do? Good, so divide it by your number of that one. So that you would have to be able to do to help you find the, the mat later. So let's do that. Um, I can just use my phone calculator to add these up. But when I do add them and whatever number I get, I'm gonna divide it by however many numbers there were. So how many numbers were there? It also tells you up here that there's 10 model bridges. But yeah, there's 10 data points. I added this up earlier, so I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But it was 160 when you add these numbers up, divided by the number of numbers, and that's your mean. So my mean is 16. Now, for mean absolute deviation, mean is like your average, like your typical number in a data set. Most of the numbers are around 16. Absolute is like absolute value. Not sure if you're familiar with that at all, but here's like a little crush word. If you're seeing bars that look like this, like the straight up and down bars, and there's a number inside them, it wants the absolute value of that number, which is like how far it is away from zero. So how far is five away from zero? So the absolute value of five is five. How far is negative five away from zero? So the absolute value of negative five is also five. You should never take the absolute value of something and get a negative, okay? So mean, absolute, and deviation. We want to figure out how far away each data point is from the mean. Okay, so I'm going to put absolute deviation here and tell me how far away is 13 from our mean, 16. 30. Not negative 30, like that's what we mean by absolute, like we're just counting and keeping track of how far away something is from me. Sorry, my screen kind of froze. Okay, so it's three away from 16, our mean. How far away is 14 away from the mean? And we had two 14, so I'm going to write it twice. How far away is 16 from 16? Good. How far away is 18 from 16? And how far away is 19 from 16? So that's our absolute deviation. Our mean absolute deviation would be us now taking the mean of this. So now I'm going to add up these numbers and divide by however many I added, including the zeros that still count. So I should still be dividing by 10. So of 14. Out of these numbers divided by 10, it'd be 1.4 for our mean. I know it's a lot. The next lesson that we do tomorrow, I'm going to show you how to do that with the calculator.
So um, where all you really have to do is put in your data and it'll tell you who you need and that without you having to know this process. But you still need to know the process because of like the procedural things that go on that it could ask you on the test. Um, so I can't show you how to check your answer, but the main thing is that your mean tells you like a typical value in your data set, whereas the math tells you how spread out your data is on average. So like on average, my data is spread out about 1.4. Okay. Questions on this? Those are the two answers. Does that help? I know it's a long process. You will learn eventually how to do it with technology. Um, other questions? From any practice? Any um, box spot thing ever out of my Okay. Okay, IQR. So let's, I know there was another one on here about IQR, so I'm going to go to that one. Know that this is being recorded, so if you can go look at it again later, a prior or something. Um, so there's that. But this one. Okay. So. IQR stands for interquartile range. So to understand that a bit better, do um, you guys know how to find like just your regular range? Like if I asked you what the range is for this data set, that goes from five to 12. Well, nine five, and my range is seven. Like my range is five to smallest to my base. Um, that's my maximum minus my minimum. So whenever you think of range, think of a subtraction problem. So then interquartile range or IQR is also a subtraction problem, but it's you subtracting your quartiles, like your bigger quartile minus the smaller. So find interquartile range, I need to identify my quartiles, my Q3 and my Q1. What do I have to identify before I even find that? We reviewed it today. Before I can find Q1 or Q3, I have to find what first? The median of the entire data set. So that's what I'm going to do first. Go left, go right. So I get a middle number or middle two numbers. And since I had an even number of data points, I have two numbers in the middle, I have to average them. Just add them together, divide by two. So my median is nine. And since I had to average these two numbers, I'll give you a show it this way. Circling one of them. So you never cross out the median. Why I represent it this way when I have to average the two numbers in the A bit on me. So then Q3, by definition, is the middle of my upper half. Here's my upper half of data. We're going to find now the middle of that, which since there was an odd number on the upper half of data, I should just have one number in the middle. That's my Q3. Now I need to find the middle of my lower half of data and that would be my Q1. So what's going to be my Q1? Eight. And it's a good eight to be specific. Since we have to go left, right, you don't cross your median, my median is like in the middle of these. Um, eight is my middle number. And then what's ten minus eight? So my IQR is two. That's it. Um, this is another measure of center versus 
bread. That's going to be a really big thing in this unit. Um, median is your middle number. It tells you like a typical value in the data set, which is nine. IQR is how spread out my data is. So on average, my data is spread out two, like by two numbers. Not all of them are perfectly spread out by two, but on average, that's the spread out. Good, any questions? All right, other questions, other parts of chapter two. And then I did like without you without you asking a third attempt in there. So everyone should have like third attempt if you can get 100 percent on this. Um, but other questions. Closed mouths don't get fed. So if you're just like being shy, stubborn, if you're laughing, never know. Still have that same question. That's the next one. 